Hey everyone, it's Corey with Real Filmmaking, and today I wanted to do a quick video about my Cinema DNG MLV workflow. Now I've done a ton of videos here on the channel about Magic Lantern and shooting raw video with it, the Canon EOS M. It's awesome, you should definitely check it out. I did a video a few months ago about my Sony S-Log3 workflow with MLV app and all that stuff, and a lot of you said it was super helpful. And I wanted to do this video to answer some questions I saw about people asking about Cinema DNG. And hopefully this can help you if you're interested in getting into working with Cinema DNG with your Magic Lantern files. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're here in MLV app. You can see I have a lot of different behind the scenes stuff that I shot. But we're going to take a couple of these into Resolve, get them good to go, make some magic happen. But a couple things, we need to look at our export settings up here. So click on these little gears up here in the left corner. And so you will get your different settings. So as you can see, if you click codec, you get the drop down of all the different stuff. And so we wanna make sure this is on Cinema DNG uncompressed. Now there's a couple different options here. And so from a lot of my testing and the different consensus that I've got from like Magic Lantern groups and stuff, uncompressed tends to be the best, it's quick. You don't really lose any detail in the footage. And so that's what I've worked with and I have a lot of good results with it. If you want to resize any of your footage for any certain reason, you can do that here. Frame rate override. And you can also export the audio. I want the audio in these clips because I'm doing a BTS. So do that and then just click export and you'll be good to go. So now we're going to hop over into DaVinci Resolve, I have a project open. And so I have all of my exported Cinema DNG files here in this folder. And so I can like click through them, see them. And you can see here the files look kind of weird and that's because I shot them with Magic Lantern and Crop Moon and a different aspect ratio, but that's something that we can sort out once we get the clips into our editor. So now we've got them here. We're just gonna pull these into our timeline. And as you can see, we still got this issue going on. It's like, what do we do about that? So I shot these in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So I know the math to get them stretched out to the proper width. So if we unclick this link here to unlock the dimensions, I know that I need to increase this to three to get about the correct aspect ratio. Another way that you can also do this and get the same effect is you can come down here to retime and scaling, hit scaling, set it to stretch. And you will get a proper looking image. So, so generally what I like to do is like pull all my clips into my timeline and then select all of them and just make the same adjustment. You can also do the same thing here too, but all right, we're looking good. We'll be good to go. So now we want to hop over to our color page right here. We've got all of our clips looking good, ready to go. So we want to take advantage of shooting raw with these, you know, I think I shot them in 12 bit, uh, but that's a lot of colors. It's billions of colors, a lot of bit depth for us to work with. But right now we're just locked into just the standard kind of what the camera saw. So, and we need to come down here to the camera raw icon down here. It's on the far left of this row of all these different icons. And we want to click decode and we want to click clip. And as you can see, all these different parameters open up to us. So now we can mess with the exposure. We can change the color temperature. We can do push the highlights. We can do a lot of stuff here. In addition to all the stuff that we have control over in Resolve normally. So I'm going to come here, do the same thing to these clips. So we have full control and like I mentioned, we want to maximize using all of the color information that we have by shooting raw. And so to do that, we need to move to a bigger color space. Now this might sound a little bit scary, but I promise, hang with me, I will take you there. 
So right now we're working in a smaller color space. Rec 709 is a smaller color space. It's mostly used for displaying colors. But when you're doing a lot of work with colors, especially if you're shooting with cameras with 10, 12 bit color, we want to work in a bigger color space that allows us to push and pull colors without anything breaking or without getting any weird like banding or artifacts. And so to do that, we need to move into a bigger color space. So we're going to first lay out a very simple node tree so we can move our image into a bigger working color space and we can make a lot of adjustments and then be on our way to getting a good looking image. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna hit option S to make a serial node. Hit that a couple more times. We'll just keep this very simple. We'll do like a four node structure. And so then I will right click and hit node label and we're gonna put CST in. Labeling the nodes is super helpful. You can know what's going on. And then we're going to come to this last one right click to do node label. We're gonna put CST out. Now you might be asking, Corey, what is CST? Well, CST stands for color space transform. So that's that whole idea that I'm talking about moving from a smaller color space, which is Rec 709 into a bigger color space, which is DaVinci wide gamut, which allows us to do a lot more with all the color information that we've captured. If you're doing stuff only in Rec 709, you know, you might be able to get a decent image, but you it's it's a lot more like you are restricted, like you have handcuffs on. You can't you don't have full range of motion. So we want to take those handcuffs off so we can really push and pull our colors. So now we're going to come up over here to our effects. So if you don't have this window right here, just click on this effects button. And we're going to search for color space transform. We got it. We're going to drag it onto this in node. And then we're also going to drag it onto this out node. And so now we see all this stuff we got going on here. We don't really need to focus on this stuff. We want to focus right here. This is the money maker, so to speak. So we need to input our color space. And so another quick lesson here, we're going to talk really quick about color space. <laughs> we could do a full deep dive on color space and all that stuff, but I would actually recommend uh, Sergio Russo. He is an M user who he creates a lot of amazing videos and information, tutorials about color grading, about using magic lantern files, getting the most out of them, explaining color space and gamma and all that stuff. So I will link his video in the description. Uh, I'd highly recommend at some point, if not right now, go watch his video. It will help you a lot. I'm trying to keep this very basic uh, so you can just set this workflow up and get going and understand some basic principles. But really his video does a really great job of deep diving and helping you to understand fully about color space and what we're actually doing here. So like I said, we're working in Rec 709. That's how these clips are being displayed. And there's different ways that you can interpret the colors that you are seeing on your display. You know, you can do Rec 709, Rec 709, but we're going to keep it pretty standard for this tutorial. <laughs> we're gonna keep our color space Rec 709 and our gamma sRGB. And why that's important is because up here in our color space transform, we need to be able to tell Resolve what color space that we're in and where are we going. So we are going to find Rec 709, and then we're going to find sRGB down here for our gamma. And now here's where the magic happens. We're gonna go to output color space and we're going to move into a bigger color space. So we're gonna do DaVinci wide gamut. And for our gamma, we're going to do DaVinci intermediate. And so you can see over here, our image looks like it has moved into a log state. Like, so if you were using S log or C log, it looks very log right here. We've lost all the contrast, all the everything. And so that is really good because it's gonna allow us to push and pull the colors and everything that we need. But before we start doing stuff, we wanna come over here and we want to put DaVinci wide gamut because 
we moved into the DaVinci Wide Gamut. We're going to do all of our editing, all of our craziness here, and then we're going to send it back out to Rec. 709 because Rec. 709 is very much the standard for how a lot of devices display colors. Uh, you know, nowadays there are different like standard variations. There's like Rec. 2020, there's Rec. 709 with different variations, like if you're on a Mac versus a PC. But Rec. 709 sRGB is pretty standard. It has been standard for a while. And so it's a pretty safe bet that if you do all your grading and then send it to Rec. 709, it's going to be fairly similar across whatever device people are going to be seeing your footage. So we're in DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. You can see stuff is happening back here. And our output color space, we're going to go back to Rec. 709 sRGB. And boom, here we are. It kind of feels like nothing happened, but now all of this is in that bigger color space and we can do a ton with it without the image breaking up or getting weird artifacts or stuff like that. So we can do a couple quick things here, you know, like how I would deal with this. Oh, and so now that we, before we actually do any more grading, what I like to do is I set this up. This is my basic node tree. And then I will copy this. So just hit copy, highlight both of these, and then paste the same thing. So now I have the same node tree on all of my clips. So I don't have to, you know, make more work for myself. <laughs> so now we'll just do some quick adjustments like how I would do it. I got my scopes over here. So, you know, I might pull my exposure up a little bit, come over here, do, do your lift gamma gain dance, you know, get, get about here, you know, I kind of want to keep a little bit of this contrast right here. So, you know, that looks, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, you know, do a similar thing here with these clips. You know, maybe push my gamma up a little bit. We we're doing a fun, <laughs> doing a fun little party scene here. Uh, I'm gonna keep that, you know. So I want to keep a lot of the fun and the contrast here. Push our, push our gamma up. Push our gain. Maybe bring that down just a little bit. And so already, you know, just with a couple adjustments to lift gamma gain. We're having pretty good looking images, you know, might tweak the contrast a little bit on them, you know, might pull some highlights down, you know, it depends. But for a very simple workflow, that is basically it. You know, I might do some other stuff here where, you know, I might put on a fun effect like glow if I wanna do something and, you know, push, you know, go for like, I don't know, you know, like a filmic, filmic type look, or I want, you know, you get more of that ambiance here. If you want that sort of thing, you know, I'll do it on a node like this. Sometimes depending on how an image looks, if I want to do a little bit of noise cleanup, I'll add another node here in the chain and do noise reduction just to clean it up a little bit, but very much it is a preference thing. I know in the free version of Resolve, you don't have noise reduction. Uh, so that's not an option. You could do some other things like sharpening your image to kind of help with that. But most of the time it's like, I'm going for this sort of look. And so I don't need to do a ton of noise cleanup, but that is basically the workflow for Cinema DNG. And I love it because again, like I said, you have a lot of latitude in shooting raw. You can do a lot with your clips over here, you know, like we didn't even touch it, but how much I can push and pull these colors and still have a usable image. So definitely I would recommend using Cinema DNG if you want the most control over your clips. If you're doing like a high profile project, I tend to shoot with Cinema DNG. If it's something quick where I'm doing like a little bit of, you know, some pickup shots for something, or I'm just doing like some tests or something, I'll just probably do it 
you know, S-Log3 workflow, get those clips, you know, five or six clips. I don't mind waiting a little bit, but when it's a big project, something like this where I'm doing BTS and I want the most detail, I want to be able to tweak it, maybe match it with some other cameras, stuff like that. I definitely think Cinema DNG is the superior option for getting the most control. So there it is. That is the Cinema DNG workflow. Hopefully you found this helpful, not a little too confusing with, you know, my deep dive into color space and all that stuff. But again, if you really do want a deep dive, I would highly recommend checking out Sergio Russo's video. He has a great amount of stuff on color space, Magic Lantern, all that stuff. It's amazing. But if you found this video helpful, if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Real Filmmaking. I don't know what is going on right now. This is wild. This is, <laughs> this is, I can't plan for this. This is real. You're getting the real thing right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, subscribe to Real Filmmaking for more videos like this where my LED lights just freak out on me. And <laughs> until next time, keep making movies and watching movies and I'll see you on Real Filmmaking.